In the last Delphi live stream I did on this channel, we were talking about information that the detectives brought into the conversation, things that they brought up and how important they are. Example being Country Club Road. Why did they bring that up? Why did they choose to bring that into the conversation? And in my last short video, I was talking about the stomach connection and how the good cop and the bad cop in the interrogation brought this up and how that could potentially lead back to Tony. And I think we all know it's important to look at the information the detectives bring up because they are bringing it up for a reason. They know a lot more than we do. In most big cases, and Delphi is no different, there seems to be one journalist that goes a bit deeper than the rest. They're the go-to guy. In the Gabby Petito case, it was Brian Enton. A lot of you found Brian from the Gabby Petito case and really like him. Compared to Delphi and Summer Wells, there wasn't much to that case. It hit hard, hit fast and was done with in a few weeks. But during that few weeks, Brian was the go-to guy. And he pops up every now and again with the Summer Wells case. I still have beef for him over how he reported on that DV incident with Candace and Don. I don't care what you think about Candace. Reporting on DV like that is irresponsible and dangerous. And with the Summer Wells case itself, we have Ainsley Daniels. She's been there from the start. Still going, making a lot of content this week again on Summer Wells. I'm sure she has a lot of knowledge about stuff that we wish we had. Anyway, the person in the Delphi case that is most like these two is Barbara MacDonald. She works for a HLN. She was part of the podcast Down the Hill, which is fantastic. If you haven't listened to that, please do. If it's been a while since you listened to it, it's also worth going back listening to it again because things sound a bit different now. Barbara is also the person who interviewed Kagan Klein, and that's what I want to talk about. Because the Kagan interrogation came out soon after that. Both documents were obtained at the same time. The Barbara one came out first, and then we very quickly moved on. But I think there are some things in that that are being overlooked. The transcript that we got was the interview that Barbara did for the HNL special. She was the first and probably the last person to talk to Kagan after his name came out. They did make plans to meet again a few days later at the end of the interview, but I doubt that took place. The word on the street before the special came out was that Kagan put the phone in Tony's hands and that he was the last person to talk to Libby. That's what the detectives told him. The profile he created was the last person to talk to Libby. I made a video before that special came out just talking about that and to be honest the special wasn't great. I didn't make a video after it because we had all the important information before it was even aired. I was very disappointed with it. It seemed very short but there was nothing in it about Tony. Not a mention and at the time I was a bit disappointed and Barbara I was like why didn't she ask him this? But she did because when we got the transcripts 80% of this was about Tony. When I first talked about this transcript I didn't know how it came about. So I was speculating, was Barbara going to be fuming over this? Was she holding it back for another special? But I don't think that was the case at all. I think Ellie didn't want this out there and told them, don't you put this out there. Probably changed her mind a few weeks later, but that's a different story. We know it's part of evidence, so obviously it's important. And having initially thought that Barbara wasn't great in this interview and didn't ask them the questions that we wanted to be asked, it was a completely different story. Barbara did amazing in this. She wasted no time, got straight to the point. Within seconds, they were talking about Delphi. No hesitation in going for Tony and asking questions about him. She knows her stuff. She knows her stuff. And I guarantee you, she didn't get to half of what she wanted to ask. This interview was recently. This was in December. So now Kagan is after spending over a year in jail after his interview that was leaked. And now all of a sudden he has no problem saying, yeah, Tony could have on the phone. A very, very different attitude to that first interview that he got when he was arrested. And possibly if he was after saying that a few weeks previously to the detectives, maybe that's what triggered the fresh raid on Tony's house in November. They needed something for that. There must have been information given for that raid. But a part of that interview that I think is overlooked is when Barbara asks about Ron Logan. And she just comes straight out. Can I ask, do you know who Ron Logan is? Kagan says, no, he doesn't. She tells him he's the property owner of where the girls were found. Kagan says, okay. Kagan is lying here also because we know he followed the Delphi case. Anybody who followed the Delphi case knows who Ron Logan is. She asks, do you know if your father knows him? He says, no, not a clue. Never heard that name before. Which is a lie because he's definitely come across that name before even if it just was looking up the Delphi case all Barbara says back is interesting and then she moves on and I haven't heard much people talk about this why did Barbara ask that she knows more than 99.9% of us she must have a reason what does she know that we don't Kagan's response I find very odd like I said we know he was following the case anyone following the case knows who Ron Logan is and to me if he didn't the natural thing would be to ask Barbara about it 
No, I don't know who Ron Logan is. Why are you asking me that? Why are you asking me, does my dad know him? There must be a reason. He was uncomfortable. He wanted to move on as fast as he could. Why didn't he ask Barbara why she is asking him that, wouldn't you? I think most people would. There must be a reason why she is asking. Is there a connection between Tony and Ron? Is there a connection between Jerry and Ron, Tony's dad? Has Tony ever been on the property before? Has he ever hunted on that property? Has he ever fished on that property? We know Ron used to allow people hunt on the property. So was Tony ever there? I don't think for a second that the... the I was going to say kill site, that's such a horrible word. The location where the girls were found was the first time that the person who killed them was at that location. It might have been just that morning, it might have been the week before, but they knew the location of where they were marching the girls to that day. They were there before, they maybe had a bag of stuff stashed there, ready and waiting. The person who did this was absolutely familiar with the trails, he must have been. And there's spots around there that are, uh, it's a good creeper spot. You can be out there hunting and also creeping on people walking the trails. I just really believe the person that did this was at that spot before. Whether it was that morning, a week before, years before, he was familiar with the area. And familiar with the location of where the girls were found. Maybe he was there when he was a kid himself. Maybe he fished there with his dad, hunted there with his dad. Liked that spot, enjoyed it because you could peep on people also. And I started this video with talking about detectives and the things they bring up. But Barbara's no fool either. I know she's not a detective, but she's deep in this case. And she's doing it for a reason. She's asking that for a reason. She knows something we don't. What is the connection to Ron? I don't believe at all that he was directly involved. But people did point fingers at Ron. And they came for him very hard. Very hard at one time. They put huge pressure on him. His house was raided four weeks after the girls were murdered. And to me at the time, it just seemed a bit desperate. It seemed a bit of a Hail Mary. He was an 80 year old man. 80 year old men don't turn into killers like this overnight. He had a, a zero history of sexual misconduct or violence of any kind. And he told them he went to the dump that day. He said he went to the dump. I think he said he had a beer at some pizza place. So he was after drink driving. And because of this, because of the information he gave to them, they hammered him. Very excessive. He was paraded in ankle chains in front of the media. And when this was happening, everyone was like, oh my God, that's the guy. He definitely did it. Look at him. And he got three and a half years in prison for this, which was madly excessive, all things considered. He did get out after a few months and was allowed to serve the rest of the time at home. But they dragged an eight-year-old man through the mud, a non-violent, long-term resident of the community, and sent him to prison for three and a half years. It just seemed a bit strange and excessive at the time. But was it? We know now that the raid on the Klein house was around the same time. We didn't know that at the time. We thought this was the only raid happening. And they surely asked him, does he know Tony and Kagan? What did he tell them? And why did they go so hard on him? Did they think that he was holding back information? And were they going so hard to try and get him to talk? And more importantly, did he say that information before he died in January? Does he know Tony? We know he lets people hunt on his land. Did Tony ever hunt on that land? Why did Barbara ask that? I guarantee you she asked that question for a reason. And the search warrant affidavit for Ron Logan's house. What was on that? What piece of information did they get that enabled them to get that warrant? Has to be something there. There must be something. And where did that come from? Don't be surprised at all if you hear a connection between Ron and Tony. What is it? What's the connection? Why is Barbara asking that? Let me know what you think. Am I missing something there? Is, is there a connection there that I'm missing here in this video that I'm not seeing? But I, I definitely think this is something that's going to pop up again in the future. Good luck. God bless. I hope today is the day.